Mesoamerica is the historical and cultural region located mostly within modern-day Mexico, as well as El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Belize. Around 7,000 years ago, the farmers in this region became proficient in the cultivation and harvesting of corn, which became the staple crop in the region. They also farmed chilies, beans, tomatoes, squash, and cocoa. The Olmecs were first discovered from the many large stone helmeted heads they left behind. Were the first to develop a written language in the Americas, large cities, pyramids, ritual ball games, chocolate drinking, a complex calendar and pantheon of animal gods, were all features of Olmec culture, which were passed on to successor Mesoamerican civilizations. More than any other material object, the Olmecs prized jade above all else. They created expansive trading networks that stretched hundreds of miles to obtain this precious mineral. The Olmec civilization was destroyed in just as mysterious as a manner as they appeared. A successor civilization maintained their culture in a diminished fashion and endured for several hundred more years in the Northwest. But as the Olmecs faded away, several prominent civilizations began their ascent along the old Olmec trading network. To the south, the Zapotecs arose from the union of three distinct populations who had waged war on each other for hundreds of years. They either banded together or united forcibly. On a mountaintop, bestriding the three valleys, a magnificent capital city was built. At its height, the empire ruled over 1,000 cities and towns, administered from 15 palace complexes. The Zapotecs developed an early calendar system, and as many scholars have postulated, the earliest glyphic script in the New World, beginning before 600 BC, and directly related to all other scripts in the region. The Zapotecs stand out as being the longest continuous civilization in the region. Their capital fell into gradual disuse and abandonment after 1000 AD. Although their empire would deteriorate after a long period of intermittent decline and foreign domination, they would continue to exist as a smaller kingdom, all the way until the arrival of the Spaniards in the 16th century. To the Zapotec southeast, the pre-classic Maya developed large urban cities, monumental architecture, a Mayan script, and political institutions, including divine kingship. In contrast to the unity of the Zapotecs, the Maya would primarily wage war on and compete with other Mayan kingdoms. To the north, the city of Teotihuacan began to dominate. Beginning as a religious center, it attracted a flood of migrants from all over the region. The metropolis had a staggering population of over 100,000, and perhaps as much as 250,000, making it one of the most populous cities on earth at the time. In contrast to nearly all other ancient metropolises around the world, the citizens of Teotihuacan enjoyed permanent stone dwellings, often large, spacious, multifamily apartments. Among the city's population, there were many foreign quarters in the city, including a Zapotec district, whom the Teotihuacans seem to have enjoyed a good relationship with. Around 550 AD, virtually all the temples atop the pyramids and palaces in the city were burnt and or destroyed. Initially, archaeologists had surmised that this was due to foreign invasion. However, the fact that the rest of the city's stone houses, where the city's vast population lived, seems to have remained unscathed and inhabited for a few hundred more years seems to indicate that the destruction may have been caused by an internal mass uprising against the city's religious and political leadership. As the Teotihuacans faded from history, a tribe from the north moved to the same region, initially appearing to be a vassal state of the Teotihuacans, and then they seem to have been involved in the Teotihuacans' eventual collapse. They were the Toltecs. This warlike people founded a capital, Tula. They are not known as the builders of the greatest cities like the Teotihuacans or the innovators like the Zapotecs or Olmecs, but they should be known as the greatest conquerors in the ancient Americas. Back to them in a moment. To the south, as the Teotihuacans fell, so did the Zapotec Empire. They were dominated by one of their vassal states, the Mixtecs, and for centuries this highly populated area of Mesoamerica would be consumed by their rivalry, as one would gain the upper hand and then the other. In the east, the pre-classic Maya suffered a dark age of depopulation and the mysterious abandonment of their cities. Following this was a period where the emerging Mayan states seemed to have been under the influence of Teotihuacan, who installed puppet rulers for a short time. And then the Maya embarked upon a golden age of achievement in mathematics, city planning, and scientific achievement, often compared to Renaissance Italy and classical Greece, with multiple city-states engaged in a complex network of alliances and enmities. Just as with classical Greece and Renaissance Italy, a few powerful city-states arose to control the region and beyond during this period. Copan and Palenque remained independent and prosperous, but the two dominant rivals to emerge in the classical Maya world were Calakmul, the populous snake kingdom, dominating the northern Mayan states, while Tikal 
dominated the southern states through political, economic, and military means. Takao also founded or sponsored several colonies over a widespread area to increase their influence in the region. As the Maya built their cities and waged war on each other, to the west, the Toltecs were building a society built around religious war. A permanent standing army with different warrior castes was established. Their armies were disciplined, drilled, and highly trained. Forts, garrisons, reserve units, and supply depots were all hallmarks of Toltec warfare, and they used this to great effect in conquering a swath of kingdoms, city-states, villages, and towns throughout Mesoamerica. Near the beginning of the 10th century, the semi-mythical leader of the Toltecs, Kukul Khan, conquered the Yucatan Peninsula and extended Toltec political influence over much of the Mayan world. Toltec trading networks and culture spread to the south and as far north as modern-day Arizona. Seventy years later, the Toltecs lost control of the Yucatan, and it descended into widespread chaos, famine, and civil war. And after a great famine that lasted seven years, Toltec influence further contracted. For the next century, the Toltecs were plagued by famine, civil war, and widespread uprisings. And in a grand finale of chaos, the Toltec capital of Tula was burnt to the ground in 1122. After the collapse of the Toltecs, there was a 60% decrease in the population in central Mexico. After emerging from that period of chaos, the Maya formed the League of Mayapan. The new city-states that emerged to lead it were greatly diminished compared to the cities of their classical Maya predecessors. During the centuries following the collapse of the Toltec Empire, many tribes moved from the north into central Mexico. According to legend, they wandered the earth, seeking an eagle with a snake in its beak, perched on a prickly pear cactus, Wherever they saw this would be a sign of where their people would live. In the early 14th century, they found this sign on an island in Lake Texcoco. Here they built a magnificent capital city, Tenochtitlan, with a massive population not seen since the height of the Teotihuacans. This well-planned city was crisscrossed with canals, separating marketplaces, gardens, plazas, ball courts, sprawling apartments, and many palaces and temples. The Mexica quickly gained control of the city-states surrounding Lake Texcoco through alliances and conquest. Although the Aztec Empire was initially conceived and called the Triple Alliance, the Mexica of Tenochtitlan quickly became the dominant military and political force. In the 14th century, two other powerful states developed in the region, the Tarascans, another northern people that migrated south and spoke a completely different dialect. They quickly gained many allies and were seen as benevolent rulers. The Claxcalan state arose, which was a republic ruled by a council of chiefs which was drawn from all classes of society, who gained their position by service to the state, usually through effectiveness and warfare. Over the next century and a half, the Tarascans and Mexica empires would rapidly grow and were in a state of near constant warfare with one another. In the east, the Maya Confederation collapsed. The cities went into further decline and abandonment. In the south, the Zapotecs and Mixtecs finally got along with each other. And such was the state in Mesoamerica when the Spaniards arrived in 1519. After landing, Cortes ordered the ships to be scuttled, so that the men would know there was no possibility of retreat, only conquest, and then moved inland. There, the Spaniards encountered the Claxcalans, who they fought to a stalemate after three days of battle. They were able to negotiate a peace with the Claxcalans. Together, they made an alliance to conquer the Mexica. Together, with 100,000 Claxcalan allies, the Spaniards were able to conquer the Mexica. The Spaniards were also aided by the fact that they brought several diseases from the Old World with them that the Mesoamericans had no immunity to, and a great plague preceded them wherever they went. After and during the conquest of Mexico and the Yucatan, the conquistadors were horrified by the human sacrifice that they practiced and sought to wipe it out, and all traces of the religion, culture, and history of Mesoamerica, burning many thousands of books with only a small handful surviving till today. And that has been a brief history of ancient Mexico in the Mesoamerican region. I wanted to focus a lot on the cultures besides just the Aztec and classical Maya, and show how they fit into the big picture of Mesoamerican history. This has been Epimetheus, and a huge thanks to all my patrons and subscribers who helped the cost of running this channel. And if you want to check out La Versión en Español, check out the link in the description. Don't forget to like and comment as you like. Muchísimas gracias, señores, damas y caballeros.